Hey, howdy folks, it's Monday and we got some new tools and uh, new new wood blade, matter of fact, for angle grinders. We also have something in for die grinders. Get back to that in a minute. But right now, I wanna look at this new wood cutting blade for an angle grinder. Said to have no kickback, 120 teeth, four and a half inch, so it should fit either one of these grinders. We'll find out, yeah. Let's get started, yes. Yes, our friends over at Graf sent us uh, this really interesting blade here. Now, they have sent a lot of cool stuff in before that has been for you know shaping and really gouging out wood in the, in the past. So this looks like it's gonna be an interesting uh, blade. It's 120 teeth, and I can see it in the packaging here. The teeth are really, yeah, if we can get that. Oh, there we go. And we also have a little washer that, uh, let's see if it's a spacer. Oh yeah, it's an adopter. So. It comes with two different sizes of uh, wa uh, holes here, so you can, if this is too big, you can use this washer to take up the difference in the slack so that it'll, it'll uh, line up properly on your grinder. Makes sense. It also comes with this protective uh, gasket on it, so we get that off. There we go. Now, yeah, wow, that is pretty interesting. Uh, well, let's mount it up on the, well, let's try go with the porter cable. I've had trouble with the porter cable in the past because the guard interferes when you mount something. And uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case today. I don't know. Let's get her mounted on the uh, porter cable here. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> and see where we get to. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we're going to have the interference problem again. Yeah, we do. Again, we're going to hit the uh, the guard. Let's see if we can't do something about that or not. I move the guard down as far as we possibly can. No, it's still hitting the guard. We've had this problem in the past. I've had to actually make a 3D print a little spacer under here to try to get it up. Uh, Shaft-wise, yeah, it looks perfect for, for that, but obviously it will not go on there again. Okay, now, it's been six minutes later, and I made a spacer washer again. As I forgot about the last time we had something in like this where it's a flat, even these discs, the same same problem. Uh, they run into the guard back here because there's no, there, you need a spacer in there, and there just isn't. When, it, when you buy these cheap tools like a Porter Cable Grinder that's on sale for, I think it was $29 or something. So, I made a, a printed a spacer washer. Now, you need to make sure that spacer washer fits two things because you want surface contact between the inside of the blade and the outside of the blade. So when you make your spacer washer, you want to come around this, but you also want this not to hit and conflict with this because you want to be able to get tight. So when you draw this up, I, I actually spaced it uh, eight millimeters was the spacing I picked for it to make sure that this would not, uh, this blade's gonna be absolutely tight because it's up against the plastic of the washer that I just made on a 3D printer. Again, I keep telling you guys, you know, 3D printer around the workshop, man, it just, it just gets out of some of the weirdest things. In this case, this is another one of, this is an excellent example of how a 3D printer can save a tremendous amount of time. I would have to run all over town and try to figure out, a, you know, some kind of a washer or an adopter or, yeah, buy a different grinder, but I just, six minutes printed that little blue washer i don't know if you can see that very well focus and uh it's uh now the blade is absolutely tight with the machine and we can try the machine out on a piece of lumber i'm gonna stick some uh, junk wood over here a piece of scrap and we'll just cut through with this blade just see how it does uh the kickback thing's got me kind of questioning it why why there's no you know it has uh yeah it's said to have uh kickback yeah it says no kickback so safe cut and all that. So like, yeah, okay, cool, you know, good. Uh, I was gonna try the battery operated one, but uh, I think we'll just pass on it, just go full electric with the power cord and all the goodies on this one. Graph makes a lot of different ones. I'll be putting links in the description below for several different blades that we have here. But also uh, back, oh, about a year ago or so, I think uh, we did a really cool one that was for like shaping wood and you just, 
tremendous you know tarot kind of thing for taking wood down really quickly and before that we had some really nice blades in as well that were again very aggressive to uh, lumber and they've made a lot of really cool blades these people don't kid around they they make some serious stuff so we're gonna try this on a piece of scrap right here right now. okay I'm just gonna go straight down through here and we'll just see how the blade goes this is a three-quarter inch piece of uh, plywood so we'll just give her a shot and see how she does Okay, wow. I had to stop because the back of the grinder hit the hit the bench here, so I had to jump over a little bit and just cut this nice super smooth cut and it went off. Well, it cut through like there was just, you know, what are we going to say? Butter. It just went right through it like it didn't even know it was there. Wow, that's creepy. Yeah, <laughs> it's good creepy. <laughs> uh, another thing too is when you put the blade on, make sure that the direction of the teeth are, you know, attacking whatever because I had to bump the grinder just to make sure I do have the blade on correctly. Okay, so obviously this blade can go through hardwood. It can go through anything. Now, there is a limitation, of course, and that's going to be how deep. So I got a 2 by 4 out, so I'm just going to show you how deep you can go. There's this deep as I can get it. Looks like it's just about a little bit better than maybe an inch yeah, of depth on the uh, lumber. So as long as you're cutting like half an inch, three quarters, something like that, you can just run right through it. Or you can just go around and around, of course, and cut the whole thing off. But this blade is so incredibly sharp. It's, it's, it's nuts. You can feel it. It's like a razor blade. <laughs> So what is this for? Who's it for? Well, it's anybody that does woodworking, of course, but uh, there, there's actually a rating on here. And it's rated for, of course, lumber or wood, like we just saw. But they also mention uh, MDF, which, you know, that can be kind of a, a really a funny thing to cut down. But here's the one that really got me was laminate, like laminate flooring. That thing would be excellent, especially if you have to take a little piece out of some flooring if you're doing a uh, pergo board or something like that. This would be extremely handy for that project. And also, of course, the uh, famous, I guess we'll call it uh, the crumble board. Somebody told me that. I, I still love it to this day. Crumble board. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you could also uh, technically, I guess you could cut PVC pipe with that too if you wanted a little chopper thing and just sort of chop it off. But... Uh, it's only good for about an inch, so you're, you know, if you have a really big piece of PVC, obviously you'd have to go turn the pipe or go around or something in order to get it, but it's a really nice, sharp blade. Now, we're going to get through this real quick because <clears throat> got another blade in from them, and this one here is on a die grinder, so I'm going to have to get my die grinder out, and hopefully I don't think we'll have the problems we had with the uh, grinder. I don't have to make anything on a 3D printer, I don't think the get this we'll see I'll go dig up my die grinder and we'll see oh uh, size that's a 7 8 hole is the stock hole on the blade just thought I'd mention that four and a half inch of course for the diameter and the the blade itself I don't know if they had the dimension on that thing or not I thought they did uh, seems to me they did have it on here someplace and uh, yeah and it was uh, 11 60 force is the thickness of the blade so whatever it's actually a two millimeter blade so yeah that's that metric thing again it's like it's, it's just getting more and more metric isn't it yeah <laughs> but let's get into this this is for a die grinder and it, I, I don't even know how many teeth it is uh wow okay 80 teeth it's a three inch with a uh, 76 millimeters in size here this way again so yeah let's get this mounted to a die grinder and uh, we'll we'll cut another piece of wood yeah okay a couple of quick notes uh, the shaft size on this thing here is set for 3 8 this and my die grinders all of them I went through every one of them and they're all quarter quarter inch so you need a little bit more die grinder so what I did was to put a tapered screw at the top here and kind of custom made a a shaft to fit this for the time being. Yes, we almost ended back up at the 3D printer, but uh, we'll just give it a shot here. And okay, really works great. I would not want to get my hands anywhere near that blade though. Wow, let's take that off the airline, but yes, that is an awesome blade. So. Let's 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 get this uh, finished up. Wow, 
I, I've got to thank Tatina for sending this over to us because uh, I, I knew when she mentioned it and said, hi, it's Graf. We've got some cool blades for you. Oh, oh these will be good. And they are. They are so sharp. That is, I think I could shave with that thing. That is amazing. That is a, just an incredible blade. And so is this one. And I just got to thank the gang over there at Graf and everything to, for sending this stuff over so we could review it and take a look at it. Uh, if you're into any kind of custom woodworking, anything like that, uh, flooring and, and all the rest of it, stuff like this is sometimes what you need, especially for crafting and all that. It's again, you know, these are the blades geared towards that idea. And I wish I could put you on to the other episodes where we had other graph components because we did have a lot of graph products come through. I think this is six or seven blades now, uh, different types that have come through. and. Everything that has come in has actually been uh, technically better, you know, than expected. So that's a really good thing. Now, uh, this is Monday, and I'm going to have to call it a day because I've got some uh, other work i got to get into. So uh, that was it for today. But uh, thank you again for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell because I guess Thursday we're going to try to get that darn tool out of here. And we'll put another one up for grabs for a viewer. Yes. So we'll have some contests, uh, giveaways. Yes. I'm out of here. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs>